Part of IGD1, this is Carlton. Now, a special report, Blind Eye to the Butcher. Some viewers may find some I images and some of the content disturbing. Dartmoor, South Devon, a place of wild, windswept beauty. It can also be a place of secrets and a place to hide. Uh, they tortured me by stick, a black hose, thin black hose with water. Uh, they put a pencil in my ear. They broke my nose twice. <laughs> they broke my knee. Uh, with the hammer. Is that the man that was in charge of that torture? Yes. He is Ian Connolly, Ian Henderson. Ian Henderson is a British national. For 30 years, he was head of state security in Bahrain a necklace of strategically placed islands in the Persian Gulf. His accusers say that under his leadership and personal example, state torture was commonplace, terror a working tool. Today, the security forces he commanded stand accused of murder, mutilation and the abuse of children. Ian Henderson strongly denies any personal involvement in torture and says the allegations are politically motivated. For over 20 years, Ian Henderson has had a home here at Holm on the southern edges of Dartmoor. Which begs a question, why is it that the man also known as the Butcher of Bahrain has never been arrested, never questioned? Ian Henderson was the head of the security division, Bahrain's uh, interior ministry, for, for several decades. Allegations of torture are, uh, are quite common. We investigated them, found them to be completely credible. Uh, this man has a lot to answer for. They had put a sticks between my leg and suspended me over a chair. I started beating me with metal bar in my leg, in my body, in my face. Uh, they hang me on a stick, wooden stick, and during that time I was being beaten very badly on my legs with uh, uh, rubber hoses, sometimes by one guard, sometimes by two at the same time. Mr. Henderson, when he come in the room, that time he is stopping behind of me and I was in chicken position. They hang all your bodies and all the pain is become in your head and your hand and your leg. And he, and he put his finger in my ass and he say, still he's not talking. Uh, really very bad. This is Kenya, a rich, prosperous land, but one that has been clouded for many months by a shadow of evil. Little is known about Ian Henderson's early days. Ranked Major General in Bahrain, his name appears absent from the British Army list, nor is he listed in Who's Who. What is known is that he learnt his trade in Africa with Kenyan internal security during the days of Mau Mau insurgency in the mid-1950s. He wrote a book about the experiences that made him a hero of the expatriate British and brought him to the attention of visiting royalty. Whatever else Ian Henderson lacked, it was not courage. Twice decorated with the George Medal, Britain's highest civilian award for gallantry, he was deported from Kenya on independence. Um, what I did many years ago as a police officer during the emergency, uh, when uh, Kenya was not an independent country, um, is today seen uh, as something not uh, very desirable in the uh, contemporary conditions of Kenya. 
Ian Henderson was out of a country and out of a job, but not for long. In the volatile emergent 1960s, other countries too had need of his expertise. One of these was a tiny Gulf state, Bahrain. Bahrain, a sheikdom in the Persian Gulf whose strategic importance to the West bears little relation to its size. Sandwiched between the regional superpowers of Saudi Arabia, Iran and Iraq, Bahrain, despite its minimal oil reserves, has long been at the center of regional and international politics. Much of the West's oil comes from this area. Until 1971, Bahrain was a British protectorate. Then came independence and government by a ruler who remained on friendly terms with Britain. Four years later, a series of decrees by Bahrain's ruler, the Emir, dissolved the National Assembly and effectively suspended the constitution. Sunni Muslims make up just 25% of the population, but include the ruler, his family and household. There were protests, street disturbances and civil unrest by pro-democracy demonstrators from the Shia Muslim majority. Suddenly Bahrain and Britain's interests in that state seemed dangerously unstable. Big fear for the governments of the region and for uh, the uh, uh, British and American uh, supporters and for the oil companies. Uh, was of uh, uh, popular movements gaining uh, independence, deciding uh, their own future uh, and the future forms of government that they uh, wanted. The Foreign Office's man in Bahrain at that time was Sir Anthony Parsons, later to become famous as ambassador to Iran and later still ambassador at the UN during the Falklands War. He was Britain's political agent in Bahrain in the years leading up to independence. When the Bahraini government asked the Foreign Office for help to recruit a successor to the head of special branch, Ian Henderson's name was passed forward. Three years later, he was impressing both his new employers and the British Foreign Office. In a secret Foreign Office paper, the unidentified author, probably Parsons, writes, Over the past three years, Special Branch, under the command of the able Henderson, has established a dominating position over the subversive groups. Two years later, Ian Henderson embarked on a series of arrests and detentions. Parsons wrote to a colleague, the ruler's view is that the detention should not be allowed to become protracted, but that Henderson was quite right in carrying them out in the first place to give the NLF and anybody else a sharp lesson. His accusers claim that Ian Henderson, the Scot once fated as a hero and presented to British royalty, was to continue giving sharp lessons to the people of Bahrain for the next 30 years. 